The Pioneer Institute is raising concerns about standards and curriculum guidelines for public schools in Massachusetts. The concerns are about reading and math and signs that the state's high achievement level might be slipping. We'd like to welcome the Institute's director of the Center for School Reform, Jamie Gass. And thank you very much for being with us, Jamie. Thanks for having me. First of all, talk about these signs uh, that things are slipping here. So Massachusetts has done historically well under the Ed Reform Law of 1993, and part of the big component of that was high-quality liberal arts curriculum frameworks in English, math, uh, reading, and, uh, and science. And uh, the problem is, is what's happened is the last couple of years, five, five or seven years or so, we've uh, adopted the Common Core standards, which are of le weaker quality, and so we've seen a national measures that we're backsliding in both English and, and math. Of course, the other thing that, that uh, is a concern here is how uh, students in this state and maybe this country measure up to some of the competition around the world. Right. So one of the big uh, focuses of the Ed Reform going back to 1993 was to be able to compete internationally. And under the previous standards in math, we've been able to do that. We're actually tested as our own individual country in 2007 and 2013. And we were right up there with South Korea and Japan and some of the high performers. Uh, the, of course, the concern is with weaker math standards that we would be backsliding. And this is particularly important for a state like Massachusetts, which needs uh, biotech and microtech and colleges and universities to kind of drive its economic engine. Now, one, one thing I've heard about the standards, at least as they play out uh, on the new standardized testing, is that students have to show how they arrived at their answers. It, to me, that sounds like a healthy thing. What, what, what's wrong with it? Well, the, one of the things uh, that is clear from a lot of the research and from the expertise of mathematicians is that kids in the early grades actually have to have what they call automatic recall uh, on mat early level mathematics. And if they don't have that, then they're never going to get to the higher level math. And the problem is, is when kids are, uh, you know, do, do a lot of sort of showing their work in extra and sort of uh, prolonged ways, it, it gets them on a trajectory where they're not going to be as quick as they need to be as they climb up the ladder in, in math. Of course, one other thing that's changed, I guess, is the recommended uh, grade level for starting students in algebra. Talk about that. That's a, that's a big one. The, both Massachusetts and California, back before Common Core, made sure that they were aligned with the expectations in high-performing East Asian countries like Japan and South Korea that made sure they had access to Algebra One in the eighth grade. That way, kids are able to get to pre calculus, calculus, and trigonometry at the higher levels in, in high school. And the problem is that under the common core standards of the standards that Massachusetts now has, is that we, it, we're basically two years behind. Now, I know I, know I might be pushing you uh, beyond the frontier of the study here itself, but you know, in this state, you, you would think there's, if there's something wrong, you, you would have these high-tech companies, biomedical research companies saying, yeah, you've got students studying the STEM subjects, but they're not you know, learning as much. Uh, but, I mean, what's going on? I mean, are, we, are we at that point yet? Well, the thing is, is that one of the first steps a year or so ago was that Massachusetts actually stopped taking the TIMS test, which is the gold standard of international math and science, and opted for a weaker quality test called PISA. Now, these are both international tests, but the TIMS one really is the gold standard. So the fact that we're not even taking the test that would be the higher quality one that would compare us to the high performing countries is a concern. And I think people in the business community are largely unaware because a lot of the details of curriculum standards uh, are beyond you know, the understanding of most people, behind mathematicians and people that work with kids regularly. This is BNN News, and we're talking with Jamie Gass from Pioneer Institute. Uh, Jamie, tr turning to the reading and literacy component here, uh, one of the things we've heard about the change in standardized uh, testing in, in the uh, curriculum guidelines is that there's more emphasis on critical thinking, which also seems to be healthy, but yeah. what, what about the rest of this? Because there are some things that you're not happy about. Well, so the, the, the real key to the success that Massachusetts has enjoyed on virtually every measure of reading, whether it's national or international, measures has been this deep commitment to classic literature, poetry, and drama. So it's things like Huckleberry Finn and Moby Dick and Sherlock Holmes. Uh, these are enormously important because the quality of the vocabulary that you find in those classic literary texts, uh, as well as the stories themselves, are much more engaging. And the evidence is very clear that this is how kids do well in reading tests. And of course, one of the big problems with these standards that Massachusetts has now and that under the Common Core is that the classic literature, poetry, and drama is cut by about 60%. So the thing that we're concerned about is, is that both in the reading and in the math side, we now have standards that are virtually the equivalent to those in places like Arkansas and Mississippi. And whether it's in reading or math, we think this is a big concern for a, standard, for a state like Massachusetts, which survives on its wits. 
In, in the study, uh, there's this phrase, a, a taste for greatness, which is what you want to teach people uh, when they read literature. But um, what does that mean exactly? I mean, is, is there more to it than just taste? What's going on there in the mind that's going to help these students down well, the Well, of course, one of the reasons why for generations people have been reading Shakespeare and Dante and Herman Melville and others is that they speak to universal truths about human nature. And these are the kinds of things that you really want children to develop early on in their lives. So irrespective of whether they go into work in media or whether they go into politics or business, they have a firm grasp of human nature and its strengths and weaknesses. I think those are really can only be arrived by high quality literature and poetry and drama. Now, uh, of course, the other thing the study says there should be more of a, a sense of a continuity between American literature and modern times, going back to British literature mm. at least. But um, why not be more multicultural? We look mm. at great literature, you know, Latin America and Asia right. and Africa. I mean, shouldn't kids be reading that, at least in translation? I think one of the great things about this country and one of the great things about public schooling is that it serves as a kind of melting pot. There's a necessity to have a kind of common culture so that children are assimilated into our society. Certainly it's important to have multicultural texts available to kids, but again, I think that the, the, the evidence is clear, is that when kids are, are uh, surrounded by great text and by a unifying text around human nature, that they just get a lot more out of it. Of course, an, another important uh, component of literacy is the part about participation in government. Uh, talk about how that's changed and what you'd like to see. Yeah, see, one of the great qualities of the previous English standards is that they were aligned with our history standards. And so it gave kids a, an understanding of state history and national history, and then they read companion literary texts from Hawthorne or Melville or James Fenimore Cooper that allowed them to get a sense of kind of the American identity. And I think that's particularly important in urban settings, but it's particularly important for our whole society these days because people seem so divided up along all kinds of different aligns that having unifying themes and unifying historical concepts that kids are able to organize and schools are able to organize around, I think is vitally important. Now, one thing that I have changed my mind about since I was in high school is that there are some great writers of color that address exactly those things. It could be James Baldwin, you know, it could be Du Bois, or even across the border of it, you know, Octavio Paz. I mean, shouldn't that be part of what kids need to get exposed to? A absolutely, and those were part of the literary heritage of this country and were part of the previous standards. The problem is, is that when you kind of adopt these one-size-fits-all standards for, that 40-some-odd states have adopted on, like under the Common Core, there's just a lot less room for that kind of uh, cultural uh, mosaic to be expressed. But absolutely, there's no question that kids should be reading Booker T. Washington and Frederick Douglass, these are great American figures and part, deserve to be part of the American canon. And, and I'll vote for to talk field too. Absolutely. In the meantime, Jamie, if people want to find out some more information, uh, you've got something on the website for Pioneer? Pioneerinstitute.org. Thank you very much for being with us. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Jamie Gass from Pioneer Institute.